Hey everyone, so I want to make a video to go over just the basics of the Amazon PPC layout. You know they just recently changed it a couple months ago and a lot of new sellers come to this page and they're a little overwhelmed by all of the options you have, all the different search bars. So I'm a, I'm a full-time Amazon PPC manager so I deal with this stuff daily. I just wanted to walk through kind of my process when I'm coming onto this page and how to efficiently read the data and then also go through some of the specific data points um, and go into those further and just explain what each of these terms means. So the first thing that I think a lot of people forget is just the date range that you're looking at when you're on PPC. So I usually default to last 30 days. That's what I like to look at. Um, but I think there's some there's some accounts that default to year to date and people come up to year to date and they see these metrics and they, they think that that's what their PPC numbers are. But you can see here, just this shows you the, the breakdown of the months. You can see how much the PPC data can fluctuate month to month. And so that's why year to date is good to get an overall idea. But if you're really going in and managing your data, you should go up to this date range and, and change it to last 30 days or change it to last month or this month. It gives you the most reliable data. And then going off of that, so this graph here, uh, at any one point you can have two data points on this graph. And they'll show you what those data points are for, in this case, what they are for each day. So this defaults to spend and sales, but you can change these if you want. You can do spend and impressions. You can do uh, impressions in ACOS. So you, can, so you can compare different things. And then if you exit out of one of these, this will open up a new field that says add metric. And these are all of the available metrics that you can add into that graph. So it's good if you're a data person, you can mess around this a little bit and kind of see uh, you know, what, you're, what you're dealing with on that. So go reset filters and that will, that will bring that back. So another thing here that they just recently implemented is this search bar up here. Now, one second here, let me just get rid of that. Okay, so this search bar, this is by campaign name. So if you type in this, just uh, this, this account is for bar stool. So I'm gonna search, type in 24. So it's only gonna give me 24 inch bar stools. But then what you also need to do is filter this by active status. This is something they just implemented that's a little annoying. So you need to go active status and then you can see here that these gives you all of the the statuses of your campaigns so enabled means they're running paused you've paused them or archived means uh you archive them and you can't access them anymore so usually to make this cleaner you would go to enabled and then you have to click saved so when i have this now i have all of my campaigns that have these that have 24 in their title and that's when we make it down to this page so we make it down to the campaign names and all of the metrics now this is where some even more metrics come into place you can see all the campaigns over here again they're they're bar stools you have the type now sp is sponsored products that is a normal ppc ad where it just shows at the top of search results this sb that is sponsored brands and those are the headline search ads those are the ones that are at the very top of the page with they have a tagline and like three products in them and they have uh, you know you can customize those a little bit so that's the difference between sp and sb and then targeting the manual and automatic hopefully you know the difference between those two types of campaigns budget start date, end date, those are all self-explanatory. And then you have your spend and sales and impressions. Now, these are all, again, kind of the default columns that they open up. If you go here, you can see you can customize columns and these are all the columns you have access to. So right now I have all of them checked just because it's easier uh, that way to see we I just, I just want to walk through all of these but if you uncheck one of these then that'll just take take it off of that table and it might make it cleaner for you if you don't want to look at that metric and then of course you hit apply and it'll apply it to these so the one that really trips people up is so 
is the ACOS. Um, but before we get to that, well, I'm gonna walk through all of these. So impressions, this is just how many customers see your ad in a given date range. So you always wanna remember what date range you're in. This is the last 30 days. So for this campaign, this campaign alone has gotten 365,000 impressions. Um, and then the CTR or the click-through rate is how many clicks you've gotten based on those impressions. So actually this click-through rate is calculated by dividing the clicks by the impressions. So that would be 912 divided by the 365,000 and that's how they get the click-through rate. So just an example here, again, the click-through rate is how many customers click on your ad compared to how many impressions you get. So to simplify it further, if you get 10 clicks for 100 impressions, you get a 10% click-through rate. Again, that's a very, very high click-through rate. As you can see, most click-through rates are gonna be probably between like 0.2% to maybe up to 5% or 8%. Now, the cost per click is how much each click costs when someone clicks on your ad. So if someone clicks on an ad in this campaign, you're gonna to have to pay for whatever that keyword bid is. So if we go into this a little further here, just bear with me, just so we can get an example of, of the cost per click. Now you can see here, this keyword counter stool. Again, whenever you come in here, you need to customize these columns. So let's go cost per click for here. And just another good note is whenever you're in any screen here, I, you can sort these columns and it'll sort it like it's an Excel sheet. So if you go to clicks, you see you click, you click that once and it sorts it by the least. If you click it again, it sorts it from greatest to least. So whenever I'm in here, I like to sort it by spend. It just, it just lets you know kind of, uh, you know, the most, the highest volume keywords you're looking at. So you can see here, uh, a better idea to get your, your cost per click now, right now, this keyword bid is 85 cents because we dropped down the keyword bid because the, the cost per clicks were too high, but you're not always going to pay what you bid. So if you're bidding 85 cents, that doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to pay 85 cents for the clicks. You're usually going to pay lower, lower than that based on what everybody else is bidding. So there's a lot that goes into it, but just know that even if you're you know, some people go out there and they bid $10 on keywords. Now their, their cost per clicks are still gonna be high, but they're not gonna be paying $10. So that's just something to look for when going into that. Know that you're not always gonna be paying what you're bidding for. So I just wanna come back here to, the, to these campaigns we're looking at and go over the big one the ACOS, the advertising cost of sale. Now, this is Amazon's term. This is the big PPC metrics that everybody looks at here. So for this campaign, the ACOS for the past 30 days is about 21%. Now, what the ACOS is telling us, it's the advertising spend in relation to the total sales, the total PPC sales. So if you spend $3 in PPC and get $10 in PPC sales, you're going to have a 30% ACOS. So that's all it is. You spend $3, you get $10 in sales. That's where they get that 30% number from. So for this example, this would be $9.77 in spend over $4.452 in sales, and you get that 21, 22% number. So this is always the number that people look at because it tells you, it, it's really one of the best indicators to tell you how your ads are doing because you're spending this much and you're getting this much of, of a return for the ads. Now, everyone always asks, what's what's the ACOS you should shoot for? Or what, you know, what should my ACOS be? And there's not a one size fits all number because it changes so much on the category. It changes so much on if you're launching a new product, if you're a very old seller that has a lot of sales data. So there's a lot that goes into that, but that's the, the main thing that you should be looking for is that ACOS. So 
I think that's really they're just the biggest thing. Those were really the main points, uh, at least walking through this interface here. Um, just know that there's a lot of options you have to sort these campaigns and to go through them and look at different metrics. Um, but some of the big things you want to be looking for, again, that ACOS, the click-through rate, and then one more thing that you always want to try to look at that they actually don't put on there is conversion rate. Now, you know that organically you can look at your conversion rate in some other places in Amazon, but you can't look at your PPC conversion rate. They don't give you that. So if you want to calculate this manually, which is another great metric to look at because it shows you how successful your ads are being. And again, that's just going to be how many, or how many PPC orders you get in relation to total clicks. So if you get one order and a total of 10 clicks, you're going to have a 10% conversion rate. But again, they don't offer this. So if you want to do that manually, I would say you would, you would again take your clicks and divide it by your number of orders to get that conversion rate. And that's another great thing. You can, you can take that conversion rate, you can compare it to organic conversion rate and really see how your ads are doing. So I'm sure Amazon is gonna change their interface again in the future. There's always new things they're adding to this uh, because they're really expanding quickly on this platform. But just wanted to walk through all the little all the little nuances here, and I hope that helps. And you know, always feel free to reach out if you have any questions.